November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month as well as Radon Action Month. And I'm joined by Dorothy with Great West Radon to tell us about the link between lung cancer and radon gas. Yes, so radon gas is actually the leading cause of lung cancer in non-smokers in Canada. It's a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas. And everybody has radon in their home. The question is how much? Just how much. So it's so important to test your home for radon levels. And how does one go about that? So we can do testing in a couple of different ways, but the key is long-term testing. Mm -hmm. So radon gas fluctuates a lot with different weather, temperature, pressures, if there's like rain or snow, any of those sorts of things can cause really big fluctuations. So that's why it's always recommended to do at least a 90 day test. Mm -hmm. Right. It's very similar to carbon monoxide in that it's odorless, it's colorless, you can't smell it. Yes. You need specialized devices to be able to test properly for radon. Mm -hmm. So there's long-term test kits. Those are just like the little square pucks that you leave out for a minimum of 90 days. Then you send them to a lab, the lab analyzes them, and then you get an email with your results. So it's very inexpensive and it's very easy. Um, alternatively, a lot of people get worried if they find out they might have a, a carcinogenic gas in their home. So they might want to use a digital monitor and digital monitors um, vary in price because they test different air quality metrics as well. Uh, but they start giving you preliminary results within about 24 hours. And then you do also want to leave those out to make sure that you're seeing those fluctuations and that you are also getting a long-term average. Wonderful to hear. Thank you so much, Dorothy. Thank you. Now, of course, stay with us later on in the show. We'll show you an example of how you can do radon testing at home. But for now, for more information, you can visit greatwestradon.com. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month as well as Radon Action Month. And I'm joined by Dorothy with Great West Radon once again to talk about the links between radon gas and lung cancer. Radon gas is the leading cause of lung cancer in non-smokers. Correct. Yeah. So it's very, very common, especially where we live. Western Canadian prairie provinces are actually the second most radon exposed population in the world, only second to Poland. So it's really, really important for everybody to test their home, even two neighbors living right next door to one another can have completely different radon levels in their home. Let's talk about those misconceptions because some people feel like there's less radon in one area or more radon in another. Absolutely. And, and while we've definitely seen some areas with high levels, uh, the research has actually proven that not one neighborhood in Calgary has not seen high levels. So um, any misconceptions about certain communities being radon free or something like that is simply false. Um, all communities have radon levels. All homes have radon levels levels. It depends on how much. Um, also, there is some misconceptions about brand new homes having, you know, the code in place to prevent radon entry, but we actually sometimes find some of the highest levels in brand new homes. So it's extra important to make sure that everybody's testing regardless of the age or location of your home. And testing should take place every two years. Correct. So uh, any major ground disturbance within five kilometers of your home, five kilometers of your home can actually impact your indoor radon levels. Um, so people that were maybe close to Stony Trail construction, or if there's some major, you know, condo developments or anything like that in your area, it's always a great idea to test. Even if you've done some renovations, changing out the windows in your home, that can even impact your indoor radon levels. And testing is so easy. We have a selection of different devices that homeowners can purchase, uh, at, uh, by on their own they don't need to call in the experts absolutely so testing is done by yourself at home um, you can do the kit that you leave out for 90 days and ship it to the lab or you can buy a digital monitor that'll give you short-term and long-term results as long as you're testing and using a proper device um, there's a few that are recalled right now so just making sure that you're being careful to use the proper device when testing is important and what are safe levels of radon? So under 100 is considered low risk. Between 1 and 200 is considered intermediate risk. So if you have cancer risk or children in the home, any kind of lung issues, it's probably best to act at anything over 100. And then anything over 200 is that Health Canada maximum level and should be mitigated. And that's when you call in the experts. And we'll have more on that later on in the show. Thank you so much, Dorothy. You bet. Now, of course, to learn more about radon gas or to buy any of these devices, you can always visit the website, greatwestradon.com. 
November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month as well as Radon Action Month. And I'm joined now by Jordan with Great West Radon to tell us more about the link. So uh, we've talked in earlier segments that radon gas is actually the leading cause of lung cancer in non-smokers and something that not a lot of people are aware of. Um, When it comes to testing for radon gas, let's talk about what are safe levels. We're testing the lowest level in our home. Yeah, so Health Canada recommends action at approaching 200. World Health is at 100, and then the EPA in the United States is 150. So really, you know, cell level damage starts to become measurable at 100. So if you've got home office, home gym, kids at home, you know, uh, cancer risk, there's a, a high likelihood that you should be mitigating at 100. That's right, because radon gas, much like carbon monoxide, is colorless, it's odorless, there's no smell, but it's more of an insidious uh, gas in, in that you're not seeing health issues immediately. This is a long time, long term average. Yes, absolutely. And if you do have high levels in the house, it's a really simple solution and that is radon mitigation. So that's what we see here. So we've got our fan, our suction pipe here. And basically what the system is doing is it's pulling the gas out from underneath the house and venting it outside before it has a chance to even enter. And that's why it's effective at reducing the indoor levels of up to 95%. And Great West Radon works with West Creek Homes to install this mitigation system in all of their new homes. Yeah, and that's part of their Healthy Homes Initiative, which is not code. By code in Alberta, as of 2015, there's a radon rough-in pipe that comes out of the ground, but that doesn't do anything for radon reduction. That just makes it a little bit easier should you have high levels and need to fix it. And this here, like I said, is the radon mitigation system that we would install on top of the radon rough-in pipe. Perfect. That's also why it's so important to test every two years. 100% because there's, uh, you know, anytime that you increase efficiency in the house, whether that's new furnace, new um, ventilation or sealing up with windows or just increase efficiency, that all traps the gas in. So it's, uh, it is critical to continue to test. Thanks, Jordan. Absolutely. Now, of course, for more information on radon gas, to purchase any of their radon gas detectors, or to learn more about radon mitigation, you can always visit greatwestradon.com.